Galaxy Afi We, the only deep brainwashing station. So I was just talking in the background there to our guest caller who's going to be calling in on Skype, our brother Ronald Dalton. So uh, he's just lining up uh, us on Skype and he's going to call in. That way we'll be able to uh, interact, uh, the group style that we like to do here on the big G. So um, I want to thank you uh, for your patience. As you know, uh, he is the filmmaker of a show called From Hebrews to Negroes. Yeah. And uh, he's been, uh, yeah, some of you, well, our regular listeners here on the big G will already be uh, familiar to some extent with uh, the film and what it's about. And uh, yeah, there's been a lot of interesting discussions discussion around this one and uh, for some uh, the content is very new for others it's not so new so we're going to try and get him on Skype just so that we can have uh, a conversation with the family Uh, if that's not possible then you know we'll do it through the phone and try and work with it that way it doesn't look as though it's happening so because of time uh, let's hook them in by telephone all righty so have I got them coming through on the telephone line? Greetings, caller. Greetings. Ah, oh, yes, so I can hear Sister Royalty. And uh, do we have our brother Ronald on the phone as well? Um, I'm here. Yeah, okay, fantastic. So, um, yeah, while we were off there, offline, we were trying to get them to come through Skype so that we could uh, do it uh, in the style that I like to do on my shows, which is uh, the interactive conversation style. But uh, we're going to work with the phone because, um, you know, we're, we're going to go with the phone. All righty. So, Sister Royalty, you have been busy. I've been busy and not sleeping for weeks, working around the clock around my laptop around my phone and it's Wednesday I can't believe it the event is, the event is four days away this week's gone by very quickly it certainly has flown by and, and I think it was about two months ago that you first approached me and uh, here we are so very importantly now I know you've been on a number of shows here on the Big G but uh, you know we have people listening in at different times of the day and the evening so there may well still be many listeners out there who don't know about the works that you're doing on behalf of our brother so first of all if I give you an opportunity to introduce introduce yourself and to introduce the show and then we're going to talk to the man himself is that okay yeah that's, that's perfect that's fine thank you so yeah I'm, I'm sister royalty um i've put on this event because i wanted to help bring ronald dalton jr's work to people in the uk and um because the content and the message i think is something that we all need to know there's a lot to it and so as a result of that um I would say the most high yeah give me the mandate to do that because I don't know why I'm doing it, but I'm going for the flow, what I've been, you know, called I believe to do. And so we're gonna have an event this Sunday. Um, it starts at two o'clock, finishes at eight thirty, and it will be at St Andrew's Centre in Broccoli. The St Andrew's Centre is a community hall within St Andrew's Church. Mm-hmm. So when you're coming along, that's the building to look out for. And it's in Broccoli, South East Four, two S A. So we'll be, I'm going through the movie and have a, a little bit of a breakdown in terms of, you know, having a, a couple of breaks just to go over the content that's been received in case anyone has any questions before we dig a little deeper and go into the next level of information that you'd receive. So mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. the start And so what I've wanted to do is I wanted to give people the opportunity to hear this, but not only that, if they've got questions, leave but with, sign, with signpostings for more information. So as well as Ronald Dalton Jr., I have a panel of a few um, other people who are UK-based who, um, you know, who have, who have knowledge in this area as well and can help answer questions mm. and, you know, let you speak to them about how they can get, find out more. Um, I'm also be um, giving um, attendees a, a booklet which will contain what I will call just some foundational information just to help people keep on track in case they get a little bit lost with some of the information that's received and they can also make notes as well um so hopefully that will be helpful for everyone oh okay. and then just to, yeah and there's a few a couple other things to support the um movie which is uh, um, an exhibition 
that the it's called the African Edenic Heritage Exhibition, and you know during one of the longer breaks, um, you know people can have the opportunity to have a look at that because it showcases our journey over time. Great, and then there'll be a few stalls as well. Stores as well. So bring some money in your pockets when you come to this event. So, um, it's just so royalty. One second. So, so, Galaxy family, if you would like to um, send in any questions, I can see questions coming in already. You can always WhatsApp your WhatsApp us your questions. Okay, the WhatsApp number is zero seven three double seven. Nine two zero seven zero three. So that's zero uh, seven three double seven nine two zero seven zero three. So you can WhatsApp us any questions that you may have, Sister Royalty. Um, you were just uh, telling us that the event is this coming Sunday, seventeenth of November, two p.m. at the St Andrews Centre, and the all-important uh, phone code uh, postcode is SE four two SA, and there's going to be resources made available, a panel for discussion, uh, a film. It sounds like it's really good. Let, let, let me hear. You was just trying to get in before I um, came in there. Let me allow you to conclude, and then we'll bring back in, uh, bring in our brother Ronald. Thank you. Yeah, I was just saying that um, there'll be, as well as the Q&A, there'll be a few talks, and one of the talks will be about restoration in terms of wealth and health, um, led by Devin Repo. And um, so we're, we, you know, we're talking a lot at the moment about reparations, So this is another way of looking at how we restore wealth you know, within the community. So I think that would be a very interesting conversation. Mm-hmm. Okay, that sounds uh, good as well. Brother Ronald, you are the filmmaker. You are the man behind this film. And uh, I wonder, first of all, if you could just introduce yourself to the Galaxy family. Yeah, my name is Ronald Dalton Jr. <clears throat> and I'm the author of the books Hebrews to Negroes, Wake of Black America. And I'm author, well, I'm the creator, producer of the movie, the two movies, actually, Hebrews to Negroes, Wake of Black America. And Hebrews to Negroes to Revelation, the Age of the Awakening. Hmm. And so uh, you decided that you wanted to bring this body informa- body of information to us here uh, in film. Uh, what What made you decide that you wanted to to do that? Uh, can you just explain what your motive was behind making this film? Yes. Um, I want to make a long story short. Um, my dad is a pastor, and we've been raised in the church, the Christian church, apostolic Pentecostal church, since we was little. And as I got older, I had questions that, that nobody could answer. And I just, you know, the, normally the pastor just tells you, not right now, it's, it's not the time, you're disturbing the disturbing Bible study at the service. So they never really answered the questions, and as I got older, I started to, re, you know, do a little bit of research and talking to people that they would do research and, and were conscious or so-called awoke. Um, and so it made me start questioning certain things that I that I had been taught by my parents and by my pastor. And so then I started to stumble upon things about the Jews and who they really are, uh, according to the Bible, their lineage. And then that started to open up a whole can of worms in regards to, well, the Jews and Israel are not the real people of the Bible. And they're really another identity, another nation. Then where are the real Jews at? And so when I started reading the Bible and, and looking into the curses of Israel in Deuteronomy 28, uh, I started to believe that black people, or these black people that were descendants of slavery and the diaspora, and a certain certain uh, groups of people in Africa who are called the Baptist people, that we were the descendants of the children of Israel. And so I started doing studies on different nations, in particular the Bantus people in Africa, or the so-called Negro in Africa, and different nations all across the world, and you know, with all my research and studies, I can prove with all types of different biblical facts and extra biblical facts that the so-called Negro is, that's in the Caribbean, that's in 
America, Mesoamerica, South America, United Kingdom, and other black, what you call black indigenous tribes, are descendants of the lost tribes of Israel. So that's basically what the book is about and what the, the movie is about. Mm, interesting. Yeah, um, you know, like you, I, I also grew up in the church and uh, understand what you mean when it comes to uh, questioning the Bible. But uh, as an adult, obviously, you are, you know, then in a position where you can question, you can do your own research. And, uh, you know, as it says on the great walls of Egypt, man, know thyself. As our one of our leaders, Marcus Messiah Garvey said as well, man, know thyself because you know it's there that we will find the truth as to who we are so um, the Bible obviously that's something that a lot of us here in the UK I think are at the stage of questioning I don't know uh, where you are as uh, Africans in America and questioning the Bible but first of all uh, from what you're saying the Bible still seems to play a very important role in you know this whole philosophy from Hebrews to Negroes um, um, do you believe the Bible to be fact or fiction, or do you believe it to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, or partly truth? What's your view, first of all, on the Bible? Uh, I believe it to be true. I mean, my, in my books, I can prove that the Quran is not is not the the book of authority, the book of truth. I can prove that any other religions um, I mean you could talk about the Hindu religion you could talk about Buddhism, Maoism, you could talk about the ancient Egyptian comedic religion you could talk about the ancient religion of Kush you could talk about the Sumerian religion you could talk about all, all these different religions but the Bible is a book of truth, a book of history, a book of prophecy and it's the most complete book that we have uh, in the world today that kind of gives an explanation to a lot of things in the world and also it can tell you the story of kind of like the beginning and then also the future which no other really, no book or really other, no no book really tells you know that story. Interesting. Album in different books. So, um, where did the Bible get its historical information from? Where where do those Bible stories come from? Okay, so the so if you read the Bible, the Bible says that Noah had three sons, and his three sons populated the earth. So, and they talks about you know the flood and talks about the Tower of Babel and the, and the confusion of languages and the different language families that branched off from that. And so you have civilizations that exist that have histories of the flood story, histories of the Tower of Babel or the confusion of languages and the division of people to the different parts of the world, from China and the Yellow River civilization to the Sumerian civilization to the Indus Valley civilization to the European Yarma civilization to the Egyptian civilization to the Israelite civilization. So when you look at the Bible, the Bible explains these things clearly. So you can determine based on ancient language, ancient uh, scripts, and different things of that nature that there was not just one group of people that was the beginning of it all. Like ancient Egypt was not the beginning of it all because there's languages that line up with the same dating that the Egyptians have. Like 3000 BC, the Sumerians, the Harappan, the Brahmi, all these different language families you see in different parts of the world, even in, in ancient China. And so when you look at these stories that are all lining up together, then you can conclude that ancient Egypt did not start off mankind. Like mankind did not all descend from the Egyptians so that everybody in the world is Egyptians. That don't make any sense because there's people in the world that don't look like the ancient Egyptians. They don't speak the ancient Egyptian, Egyptian hieroglyphic uh, types, of right, types of language. And when you look at the different language families in China and Japan, Siberia, Mongolia, Russia, Finland, Sweden, you look at the language families of the Shemitic cultures in the Indus Valley, Mesopotamia, Hebrew, Aramaic, Akkadian, Sumerian. If you look at the language families in Africa, you will see that there's particularly three different major language branch families. And so from that, you could tell that the Bible was true and that all these other books are, you know, they talk about their civilizations, yes, but they don't talk about other civilizations in the way that the Bible does. And then also talk about historical accounts from the beginning to certain different historical times between say 2000 BC, say 1000 BC, 700 BC, 600 BC, 300 BC, 500 BC, and then going into the first century AD, and then giving you prophecy on what's going to happen in the future. Um, these other books don't have that. So the Bible basically lays out a lot of the history that we've already seen today, and we can actually physically see with our eyes and touch it with our hands in different museums, such as museums in Babylon, museums in Cairo, museums 
in uh, Syria or northern Iraq, museums in different parts of the world. So, and even the museums in Israel as well, you can tell that the Bible stories were true. Okay, so um, you describe the the Bible as a historical book that you believe to be true. Um, I don't think I got from you, though, where those Bible stories actually originate from, because obviously the information in the Bible must have come from somewhere. Uh, Are you familiar? I've got a message here. Uh, Are you familiar with the work of Sheikh Anta Diop? Uh, his work on the African origin of human civilization, in particular the symposium, uh, where he established that the ancient people of Kemet was Africans. Yeah? Mm-hmm. You're f- are you familiar with those works? I'm familiar with that, yeah. Oh, excellent. But also, are you? I'd like to ask, are you familiar with the works of Dr. Ashra Kwesi? Uh, he studied for well over 20 years, uh, 14 years under the Grand Master Dr. Ben. He's been backwards and forwards from the very places that the Bible talks about, um, Egypt. And uh, he's actually, you know, um, studied the walls of ancient Kemet and he's seen, you know, written into the walls the histories from that period, which the Bible seems to have plagiarized yeah that's that's co- that's a common thing you see in america the people everybody says the bible is plagiarized well what people have to understand is that you had people like i just told you you had three sons of ham three sons of no you had ham shem and jafet now when you look at the sons of shem the sons of shem were the ones that progen- that had the war were, were people that uh, from the line of Abraham and, and Torah and the Israelites came from. So when you look at the Semitic people, the Semitic people of Mesopotamia and then, of course, the land of Canaan, these people were the ones that passed down the information down to Abraham, down to Moses, who were the people, the Israelite prophets that wrote the Bible. Okay, you mentioned Moses. You mentioned Moses, okay, who took how many people out of um, Egypt, for example? Yeah, now one thing about... Yeah, one thing about the Egyptians, um, and I think all anthropologists and all historians that have actually studied um, Egyptian um, works, what they will tell you is that they were very meticulous in recording their histories. Yeah, and um, they they have their papyruses, they have their documents, they actually have their ri- histories that are engraved in stone. So we can actually read their history today. We've got a lot of Egyptian history in the museums here in the UK, and those stories are written in hieroglyphic texts, which we can actually now understand because you know the the the, the Rosetta Stone that has the the Hebrew, the Greek and uh, and uh, hieroglyphic um, you know text on it has enabled us to break the code and understand a lot of the writings and so you know we we can we can understand the writings on the wall now now so you mentioned Moses and there's that story of of Moses who who was an African right uh, when you use the, when you use the term African the word term African is not four thousand years old. People, people always say this is the thing. People say that we're all African. Well, okay. Shall I call us melanated people then, just so we know who we're talking about? Who, what? Yeah. Was Moses a melanated man? Yes, he was. Because because there there was no man in the Egyptian culture that was named Africa, and he had children. They were called- yeah, yeah. I agree with you on that. So Moses, the story goes that uh you know he was put in a basket wasn't he in the ball rushes and the pharaoh's yeah. daughter you know found him and he grew up as an egyptian yeah and became a high priest mm-hmm. yeah and then he became a prophet to the people and led the 600 or 1000 or so of these egyptians out out into the wilderness yeah right that's the story did you know that there's an earlier kemet story uh, about Isis, who had to hide in the papyrus swamps because Set was out to kill uh, Horus because he feared that he would grow up to avenge his father's death. And, um, you know, 
there's a very similar picture to um, Isis and how she looks and the picture of the image of of the Pharaoh's daughter who was supposed to have found Moses. Mm-hmm. Do you, are you are you orig- are you familiar with that original story? I'm f- I'm familiar with a lot of those stories. I've, I've researched it and I debunked it in my books. But let me if you let me, if you- let me give you another example. What about the creation story? Are you familiar with the creation story in the Bible and yeah, and the original story on the temples? Yes. I mean, this is the, you know, like you, I was questioning the Bible, you see, and, and, and my questioning took me down, down this particular road. Also, some of the Psalms that we have um, in the Bible. Do you know that almost word for word, some of those Psalms could be found in the songs that were sung to Akhenaten thousands of years before the Bible? Listen, I understand everything you're saying, and trust me, I cover. And it so it kind of makes you question things, doesn't it? And even but you have to listen. You have to let me speak. Are you gonna let me speak? Yeah, go ahead, my brother. Okay, so like I said, if you do the research, now I've done a lot of research. Now, when you look at the people in Africa, there's more than one type of people in Africa. You have the pygmy tribes. You have the Kushites. Yeah. You have the people that are descendants of the Libyan Putai Berbers. You have the people that are descendants of the ancient Egyptians, such as the Somalians, the Afar, the Beja, the Allure, and different people. And then, of course, you also have a people called the Bantus people. Now, what's, what's interesting about the Bantus people is that when you check the DNA of the mummies, the pharaohs of Egypt, from the third, from the first dynasty all the way down to the 25th, or the whatever dynasty you want to go down to the 30th dynasty, what you will find out is that the DNA of the pharaohs of Egypt is not the same DNA as so-called Negroes in America, in the Caribbean, in West Africa, East Africa, South Africa, and Central Africa, certain people. When you look at the maternal DNA of the people in the Old Kingdom and the Middle Kingdom, the people that ruled as the pharaohs of Egypt and the queens of Egypt, you'll find that their DNA is not the same DNA as us. Their DNA can actually be seen the people today that speak the Egyptian Cushitic language. So when you go into Kenya and you go and speak to people in Sudan, and even in Egypt, and you talk to the people of the Nuba tribe, or the Luau tribe, or the Allure tribe, or the Beja tribe, or the Somalian tribes, or the Afar tribes, what you'll find out is that their language, is ha- their language has a lot of the ancient Egyptian language in it already, and they still practice a lot of the ancient traditions and, and customs that the ancient Egyptians practice, and also the same type of dress, the same type of dyeing of the hair, the same type of stick that they, that they carry called the hangul, and all these different things. But when you look at the DNA of the so-called Negro, when they tested the skulls of the ancient Egyptians, they tested because you could check the skulls of all mankind. You could check the skulls of people in Papua New Guinea and India and China and diff- the pygmy tribes and different people in Africa, the people in Sudan, Kush, even the people in the ancient Egypt. What they found was is that the skull shape of the ancient Egyptians was not the same as the so called Negro. When they checked the mandible, the maxible, which is the upper jaw and the lower jaw, they said it is different. There's different angles of the jaw, angles of the upper maxilla, the lower mandible. The way the teeth sticks out, the way the teeth kind of goes back in, the sloping of the front of the sloping of the front of the forehead, the sloping of the back of the fo- the back of the head, the top of the head, all these different things. They said even the blood even the blood groups were different than the so-called Bantus people. Now, when you talk about the Bantus people, the Bantus people from West Africa to East Africa, they, a, lot of, a lot of times they have a story that the way they came into Africa was through Egypt and before Egypt. Israel. You talk a lot to the you talk a lot of Baptist people that say we came from the north, but specifically the northeast. And you say, okay, you live in Uganda right now, and how do you get to where you used to came from? They say, well, you follow the Nile River up north, and then you go east. That's where we came from, the Baptist people. Some people will say we came from the area where the fig tree grows wild and free. The fig tree grows wild and free in the land of Israel. There's many different varieties of the fig tree. You ask them, where's Israel, by the way? Israel is in is is in northeast Africa, northeast Africa. That's what it's, that's in northeast Africa. So if you go straight up north of Nile River and then go east, you'll be into Israel. If you talk to tribes like the Moru tribe in Kenya, they'll tell you that they left Egypt and then crossed over a large body of water with a prophet and went into the land of Israel. They'll say this is a story that that is basically identical to the Moses and the Red Sea story. They'll tell you that there was a reverse exodus, even the, the Ebe tribe, the Ebe tribe in Ghana, Togoland. They say the same thing. They left Egypt. They went into Israel. 
Wow, I tell you, I could spend a whole show talking with you about all of this. But my brother, let me open up the lines, Jonah, because I did have another caller calling in for 11. But I think what I'm going to do, if it's okay with you, if you can hang with us, what I'd like to do is just open up the lines for five minutes and then bring in um, my next person who was due to call in at 11 o'clock. And then if I can open up the lines after that interview for an interaction with yourself, because, you know, each one teach one. Yeah. So, um, you know, there are millions of books out there and, uh, you know, the ones I've read are probably different from the ones you've read. So we're going to like, you know, share information, exchange information and, and, and see what we, uh, you know, come up with. Is that OK? Sure. Fantastic. OK. Got the first caller on the line. Uh, eight two one. Greetings, caller. Who do we have on the line? Caller 821, are you there? Oops. Caller 821. Okay, one more time. Caller 821, are you going to interact with us? Okay, I think caller 821 has gone to sleep on the line there. So um, uh, they've just hanged up, actually. Okay, well, the lines um, are open just for five minutes, and then I'm going to have... Um, bring in my next interviewee and then we're going to open up the lines at the end for a discussion with our brother uh, Ronald and also with um, our sister Shakira who I'll be interviewing next caller 821 has called back again greetings caller who do we have on the line greetings caller 821 who do we have on the line okay I Let's get rid of that uh, caller there if they're not going to talk. And uh, instead, let me go over to the text line. Uh, The um, message here says um, to ask, are your facts based solely on the Bible? No, like I just like I just said, I use DNA. I use language. I use ABBL blood groups. I use I use different types of craniometry analysis. I use the the study of the angles of the jaw, the different teeth patterns, uh, different types of, um, uh, I guess you would call it, uh, migration routes. Okay. Uh, Another question here is, uh, are you able to provide a reading list of your primary source documents? Yes. In my my four books that I have, if you read through the books, there's documents and there's genetic articles, there's medical articles, there's all types of articles and resources you can check for yourself. Wonderful. And uh, we'll ask you when you come back to give the names of those books as well. And another question message is, why was Abraham's name changed to Abraham, uh, taking on the name of the so-called Hamites and supposedly cursed? That isn't, that's, that's not why Abraham's name was changed to Ham. You have to read the Bible to understand why his name was changed from Abraham to Abraham. Because Abraham was the father of many nations, but Abraham was not the father of the Hamites. Okay. You remember that you got to remember that you have ancient Hebrew, you have proto Sinaitic language that existed in ancient Egypt in different parts like Wadi El Ho and Sarabit and Sinai Peninsula and Luxor and Thebes. You have a different language that was used other than the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphic language. Mm-hmm. This was a language that this was a language that has Semitic undertones. And the Semitic undertones eventually emerged into becoming what we would call Proto-Canaanite language or Paleo-Hebrew, Middle Hebrew, Old Hebrew, Babylonian Hebrew. And what you'll find is that the the ancient Egyptians did not speak Hebrew. The ancient Egyptians did not have a a seventh day of rest. The ancient Egyptians didn't have naming their child on the eighth day, circumcised circumcision on the eighth day, the name of one God, one creator named Yahuwah. They didn't have any of that stuff. They Mm. have tons of, they have tons of probably things that they follow but they did not follow a one guy one creator. yeah there were many ethnic groups so to speak amongst the africans about these people yeah if we call if we call all of the different groups africans just you know using today's terminology africans or melanated but if we if we have that group of africans just like today we've got lots of different ethnic groups yeah lots of different nations uh who all make up the african race that's what we're talking about, yeah? So, and then we, we've got me, but, another question me, here. It says... Will you, let me, will you let me answer your first question, what you just said, your little statement? You yeah, said. yeah, about all the different nations. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. what you've what you got you to understand, in Africa, you have, just like the Bible says, you have different sons of Ham. Now, we know that the ancient Egyptians did not produce the pygmy tribes. There's pygmy tribes in Africa, too. 
where they come from. They not come from the ancient Egyptians because their DNA is different than the ancient Egyptians. The DNA of the, of the ancient Egyptians is not the same DNA as the pygmy tribes in Africa. If you look at the people in Kush or Sudan, the Dinka tribe, the Noor tribe, the Shilak tribe, the Anuak tribe, these different tribes, they don't have the same DNA as the ancient Egyptians. Even though they lived in Sudan and they lived in the area where Moro and, and some of the pyramids of Sudan lived at, they are darker skinned people, they're usually taller, and they have different types of DNA than the ancient Egyptians have. If you look at the walls in Egypt, you'll see the pictures, the pictures of the ancient Nubians. The ancient Nubians, they had their hair worn a certain way. They were very dark skinned. They didn't usually have anything on their chest. And they were and, and you can attest that they were darker than the ancient Egyptians. You know this. So they were not the same people as the ancient Egyptians. The ancient Egyptians didn't didn't have this, the the Nubian Kushite people. It's a really interesting uh, yeah, I mean, what you're saying sounds really interesting. I mean, I uh, the, the lines are hotting up here. Uh, there's so much we need to talk about. I mean, I've got an early human migration chart in front of me right now uh, that I've looked at before, and it, and it talks about, you know, uh, the origins of the human species being in Africa and then the migration of the different uh, migration from Africa all over the world uh, as well of of f- from Africa so and we know that from those uh, DNA codes that they have now been able to analyze that um they they they've said that the earliest DNA goes all the way back to a woman in Africa that they're calling Eve and uh, right. yeah but let me bring in some of the other callers okay, go ahead, go ahead. yeah okay so brother Jeff you called in first welcome to the big G brother Jeff are you there okay I know what's happened excuse me just a minute um, let me stop what's playing behind there brother jeff are you there yes sis. oh sorry about that i had the wrong fader up yeah and my apologies to the earlier caller as well that was trying to call in uh right so i've got three callers in the group brother jeff let me let you go ahead first thanks sis. first call was me thank you sis. i appreciate my call and our guest from the united states is he still on the line i presume yes he is can you can you hear him my brother no, you no. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to get his question and then tell oh, me what no. he said. What he asked. Oh, oh okay. That's just, I'll keep it short. I know you got um, two other callers. This, um, this chap, Abraham, believes in the Bible literally. Interpretation is that correct? Sis. Sorry, let. Um, I think I'm gonna have to repeat your question. Sorry. What? What? What did you say, brother Jeff? So I said, our brother in America believes in the, the literal interpretation of the Bible. So he's asking, um, do you believe in the literal interpretation of the Bible? Yes, that's like that's like saying yes. I believe in the. I'll oh, go ahead. Good. Go ahead, brother Jeff. He said yes. Good. I, 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 I can hear him. Thank you. I can hear him very clearly. Okay. Oh, good. So can, you, can the brother explain certain empirical sources? Can you explain empirical sources? Certain the existence of people like Ad, Ad Noah. Adam. Of people like Noah, Adam. I can explain how the ark carried all species of fauna, animals and insects in a small boat. Can you explain? And can you explain how an ark carrying all animals of all fauna in a small boat? Yeah, okay. Well, Let's give our brother... So what he, what he has to understand is that people got to look at, at ancient history as this is the thing. People back then wrote the stories of what was told to them by their ancestors. Now, we may look at it like, say, for instance, in India, they have a a flood story where a guy named Manu, he has, he's he's told to build a, a boat. And on the boat, eight people get on this boat and the, and the flood happens and then they ride on the, they ride on the, on the boat and eventually the waters recede and then a, a big fish, uh, which is Vishnu, tells them okay now you guys can land and everything's good and then the eight people they get off the boat for, they basically procreate and you know basically the, like eight people that was on their boat is like the eight people that was on Noah's Ark because Noah and his family Noah had a wife and he had three sons and they all had wives that's eight people so in India they had the same kind of story in other civilizations like Native American Indians they had the same story even in the the Egyptian the Egyptian uh, whatever you want to call it what's the name it's talk about a flood happening 
where the waters waters rolls up. Uh, it's in my book. You can read it for yourself. So yeah, so he's trying to interject. Even the, even the Sumerians talk about a flood story. The epic of Gilgamesh, a flood story, and there was a boat. And One moment. Proceeded. So you gotta you gotta look at it that if if multiple civilizations are talking about a flood story, even if the people in China are talking about a flood story and they talk oh about God. different patriarchs such as Goman and Yafu and and Brother Ronald, he's trying to come back, and I've got my um I, I'm also due to interview our sister Shakira who is on the line. So um, we're just going to keep the the questions to less than a minute and the responses to less than a minute but then after my interview to Shakira if it's okay with you brother Ronald we'll we'll continue yeah all right so um let me bring in caller 791 it's caller 791 caller 791 caller 791 okay um Right, I seem to have lost caller 711. Caller 029, um, I did pick your call and it seems to have dropped out a couple of times if you want to call back. So, Brother Jeff, um, let me just allow you to wrap up there just so that I can go over to our sister Shakira and then we'll come back to this really interesting uh, conversation and we'll also allow you to put questions to our sister Shakira as well. Brother Jeff. My sister, thank you, my sister, my beautiful sister, my queen. I appreciate your your, your patience. Thank you, my sister. I says, what I do, I mean, make make for Shakira because you were due the call for it. What I do, but please tell brother stop be patronised, condescending. But these stories that he's quote, I know this story. We're not ignorant. That wasn't my question. I asked him to prevaricate. I asked him to straight questions. We clear to us. I wanted a clear to response. I didn't get that. What was prevarication and equivocation? Okay. Well, we'll have a further opportunity for our brother to respond um, after. <laughs> My next interview. Is that okay, Brother Jeff? If you keep it locked, yeah, we'll give him a further opportunity to, to respond because it's all. I mean, I mean, yeah, since I ring mean, I mean, I mean off, let Shakira, Shakira come, come through. I, mean, I think I'll mean, be back later. Thank you so much. One love. Okay. Love. Yes. Yeah. So my my brother um my brother Ronald, uh, please keep it locked to the big G. You can stay online or you can listen offline. Are you able to listen to us via the internet? Um, maybe I gotta see I gotta see how to do that here. Yeah, you can either stay on the phone line or you can listen to us on www.galaxyafiwi dot com yeah and you just scroll down the page and you'll see two play symbols just click one of the play symbols and you'll be able to hear us live and direct so that's www.galaxyafiwi.com the caller's calling in Shikara's calling in from the Gambia right now and she's calling in via Skype now when you call in via Skype then I don't have to repeat the questions you can actually hear yeah, you can hear the list that you can actually hear uh, the callers and you can have a really good conversation just like how we're conversing now. That's five hours ahead of us. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if you could do that, uh, that would be great because this is a really hot topic and uh, I would love us to continue with the conversation. All righty, my brother. Okay. Thank you so much. Well, Galaxy Family, you know, a really interesting film that our brother Ronald has uh, uh, has made. It's called From Hebrews to Negroes. And as you can hear, you know, the story uh, is about a group of people, the chosen people that the Bible talks about. But, you know, it's whether or not you actually believe the Bible in the first place. And so there's a whole discussion around that that needs to be had as well really interesting stuff but we have to rise up the brother for the works that he's doing and uh, it's you know given us an opportunity to have this discussion and this debate which is important because you know um it's good to talk and uh right now we're going to be going over to um the gambia we are going to be speaking with our sister uh shakira from the gambia and also our sister angie but i know we've got sister shakira uh on the phone right now greetings Greetings, sister. Ah, correct you a little bit. My name is pronounced Shakina. Shakina. My apologies for incorrectly pronouncing your name, sister Shakina. Welcome to the Big G. How are you doing? 
I'm fine, thank you. I'm blessed and I'm enjoying the fruits of Africa. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. And uh, I also have Sister Angie on the line. Sister Angie, are you there? Sister Angie? Okay, I'm trying to add Sister Angie as well. Um, having a little difficulty picking up the call. Sometimes this happens, you know. There are some some lines that come in, and and uh, that that uh, you know for some reason I can't then pick up other calls. But let's see how we go. So so sorry. So it's your sister Shakina. Did you say Shakina? Shakina, Shakina, R- sister Shakina. Oh, rise yourself up, my sis. Yes, you are in sunny Gambia. You're enjoying the fruits of Mama Africa. Oh, what better place to be. And I gather that you've been living in the Gambia for about three, four years now. Permanently, yes. But um, I've been coming here since 2005 and sort of living backwards and forwards until I decided, you know what, enough is enough. And, you know, the children are all grown up now. So it's time for me to pack up and leave and come and enjoy. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm enjoying Oh, fantastic. Brilliant. So um, you're, you're there permanently now in the Gambia, uh, but you're not just chillaxing with your feet up. You're actually very busy out there at the moment, aren't you? Can you just introduce yourself to the family? Tell us uh, a bit about what you have been doing and are doing in the Gambia. Well, in the Gambia, you're right. I'm not just liming on the beach, although it would be nice to because I am retired. But, you know, um, I had quite a busy career and um, I think it'd be very difficult for me to just sit around and do nothing. So um, I initially thought I was just coming here to run my health business, Nubian Health, which is about promoting healthy eating and using natural products without the chemicals, which is not good for our melanated skin. But it seems though the ancestors had other uh, plans for me. And um, they've thrown me back into the throngs of law. And with that, um, also into the building trade, which I never imagined I would be doing, but that's exactly what I'm doing here. Um, Creating a bridge, a smooth transition for our people to come over. And, you know, like anywhere in the world, you know, there are people that will say, I can do this for you, I can do that for you, and it doesn't always, you know, materialize to that. So what I do here, one of the things I do here is um, sell land to our people at a very reasonable rate, make sure all the paperwork is to... um, is, is a good quality and the root title is good and check all that properly and um, ensuring that you know the process is smooth and that they can own their land properly without any issues great oh that is so needed in the gambia <laughs> so needed just like anywhere you know you hear about people talking about that in the caribbean too where they've sent money to people and you know they get there and there's no land and there's no house and whatever else and mm. i've been here for a long time I listen to the stories. I listen to the stories of our people who haven't had good experiences. And I thought, well, you know, I've got some skills that I can use, so why not use them to help our people? Because they shouldn't have to work hard and lose their little money that they've got, that they've worked That's for. right. For people that are opportunists. Hmm. Um, so I decided to do that. Also, what I've Uh, done as well is uh, formed a small building company so that our people get good quality bills um, that I can oversee for them, make sure that the builders doing what they're supposed to do, buy quality materials, use their money appropriately and manage all that for them. So I'm going to project manage their bills and I'm actually on my second house excluding my own that I'm building for um, returnees at the moment. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yes, sis. I mean, this is a service that is so needed in somewhere like the Gambia. In fact, we need one of you in every African country because as more of us are now planning to return back to Mama Africa, as more of us are looking to invest our money in Mama Africa land, you know, we need trustworthy, reliable people who, you know, understand the system to be managing, you know, this side of the um, the contractual side of things you know 
And so rise yourself up, you know, for taking that big step to do that. Mm. Well, you know, it's something that we need to do. We're always talking about, you know, unity, helping each other, but do we actually put it into action? Mm -hmm. And, you know, sadly, sometimes we don't, and we watch our people suffer, and, you know, I know I wouldn't like to be in that position. I mean, I'm also representing people in court in Gambia, and I've managed to recover just under £40,000 for our people. Wow. Wow. That money is not easy to to lose and to just write off. Surely not. When you get to a certain age, you cannot just recover that money very easily. And I know if I came back to the UK now at my age, I wouldn't get a job Mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm too near retirement age and they'll probably think, oh, we'll get somebody younger that we can pay a little bit of money to and mould them to work the way we want them to work, not come with, you know, a lifetime of experience and opinions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I hear of our people, people you know being duped in that way I, I just couldn't not use the skills that I have from the UK not to assist them um, and then you know say on my soapbox oh you know I'm Pan-African I'm a Garvey yeah. I, that would not be conducive to those philosophies yeah my sis I'm going to introduce sister Angie as well who's trying to get through but we have some some calls when they come in they kind of like block the system and so I've been trying to add her repeatedly and and I'm unable to do so and I think your phone line is one of them can I ask you please to just ring off for a minute so Angie can ring in and then you ring back so I can add you afterwards is that okay I will do that. I will do that immediately. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, so, so that's our sister. They're doing a, a wonderful works out in the Gambia. And don't we need ones and ones like our sister there? Because, you know, there's so many of us that have been duped, you know, by people, some who we know, some who we don't know, you know, take quickly to take our money, um, saying that they're going to do this and do that. And then they don't do it at all. We all know the stories. Many of us have been, you know, those victims so um you know we we certainly need uh ones and ones like our sister shekinah to be doing the works out there so sister angie if you could call in now uh here she is okay so we can add sister angie and now we can add back sister um (laughs) shekinah sorry about that sister uh angie let me just add back sister shekinah uh sister shekinah are you there (laughs) hang on Sorry, no. Am I saying? Am I pronouncing her name wrong again? Shakina. 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 I will get. Yeah, and you're back. Excellent. Yeah, for some reason I couldn't add Angie to the call, uh, so we've done it this way round. Fantastic. So I've got you both on the line now. Now our listeners here on the Big G probably very familiar with our sister Angie from Aga Global Ambassadors. Uh, sister Aga has been very actively involved in the Gambia for many years now. Herself, alongside her husband, since 2006, have been uh, reconnecting us with the motherland organizing trips to the Gambia I myself have been on one of those trips a very memorable one it was indeed and also our sister Angie is busy here uh, in her sisters to sisters groups empowering sisters sister Angie good to have you on the line how are you doing uh, rise up yourself sis I'm very very well as you know I'm soon to be departing to Mama Africa so yeah. I'm great. Yeah. I know the feeling. I'm getting excited. I won't be too far behind you, too. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm excited. Looking forward to it. And so, my sis, what have you got happening in the Gambia when you go down? Right. So, first and foremost, there's um, a few reasons why I'm going. But the main one is our annual Health Awareness Day which has been going since 2017. That was the first year of our um, Health Awareness Day. Mm-hmm. And this, came, this, this actually came out of um, during one of our tours in 2014 for the Roots Homecoming Festival. Um, myself, one of my clients, and um, my dear right-hand sister, Aisha Tu, was involved in a road traffic accident, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which um, led us, to having to experience the healthcare system in the Gambia. Mm -hmm. And it it was quite a a traumatic experience, I I have to say. However, 
I didn't harp on it. Um, I while I was in the the hospital because I had a fractured toe and our client was seriously injured. I mm. thought mm, these, you know, I work in the NHS in the UK, and you know, I could go away and complain and moan and groan about what I'm experiencing here right now. However, you know, as a descendant, I have a duty and a responsibility to support mm -hmm. and to try and uplift and, you know, lead by example. So I came back to the UK and um, I said to our committee, I put a proposal into them and said, look, I want to put on a health awareness day in the Gambia. I feel that we could um, benefit our skills and our experience, mm -hmm. you know, and being in the NHS, we could offer some support, mm -hmm. you know, and, and with just the basic, you know, we started off with infection control. Um, because, you know, just basic things like washing your hands, the preventative things that we could do rather than kind of steaming in um, and just getting familiar with the services. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. And, you know, we had that first Health Awareness Day in 2017. We planned it here um, and communicated via social media with our team on the ground in the Gambia and the health clinic, which is the Old Josh One Health Clinic mm -hmm. um, in Old, Old Josh One. And we asked for permission. We was given that permission. And we had a budget of £400 and um, our committee. And we delivered a very successful Health Awareness Day. Mm -hmm. And since then, we have continued it. It's now an annual event um, alongside our support in terms of donations and promoting, you know, the, the, the help that we need here. Mm -hmm. um, so we've grown and we're now going to be doing our third annual Health Awareness Day and it's had a great impact in the community. So I'm very, very Brilliant. proud because health is our wealth. Absolutely. No matter, no mm. matter what we're doing, you know, um, if our health is not right, nothing matters. And mm -hmm. if you don't have a healthy nation, you will not have a healthy um, eco eco economy. So we have to start with health. And that's why we decided to, to continue to do this. So, yes, I'm excited. Rise yourself proud. up. Rise yourself up, sis. Some great works there indeed. And uh, and uh, our sister Shakina, uh, you, uh, as well as, you know, doing the works in supporting people in the courts and helping with the um, by purchasing of land and, and uh, building of properties, you've got a fantastic event that's uh, coming up next week or next strong, as we say here on the Big G, in the Gambia. Is that not so? Right. Do yes, and I'm getting excited by the minute. Oh, I'm excited too because I'm going to be there. But tell the family about this event. It's fantastic, it really <laughs> is. And you know, we have to remember our ancestors, and that's what this is all about. This is about bringing them home. You know, they've been away; they were dragged away from the shores of Africa, beautiful Africa, as free people. They were chained up, they were whipped, they were stripped of their name, religion, language, their Africanness, you know, by wicked, wicked people. And, you know, they've been away for a long, long time. And they are urging us to bring them home. Yeah. So I decided to start making estates for our returning um, people to come home. But not only just bringing our returning people home, remembering that that lineage is our ancestors because we would not be here if that lineage was destroyed mm -hmm. during the slave trade. Mm -hmm. And because we are here, it means that our lineage survived that atrocity. Yeah. Either they fought or whatever happened, but we are here because of them. We are the survivors. Yeah. Survivors. The descendants of those who survived the those rebellious ones. Yeah, the wicked atrocities. Yes, yeah. my sis. So you've got uh, an estate, yeah? You you managed to get some land. Tell us about that, please. Well, uh, um a business partner of mine, um he offered me a plot of land um, a couple of months ago, I think probably about six months ago, and said, Shakina, you know, this plot of land, there's 40 plots there. Do you want to do something with it? And I said, you know what? It took me two minutes to think, yes, I can do something. With that. <laughs> and immediately I just thought, you know what? Our people could do with this mm -hmm. because, you know, 
look, re regardless of what you say, we were taken away, and the way I describe it, we were raised by foster parents. Mm -hmm. They weren't our parents. Mm -hmm. They raised us in a different way, and we've had to play catch up with our Africanness. So, some of that fostering and that raising that we've had, that nurturing, is still with us. So, you know, if people want to come and live amongst people that they're used to, I'm okay with that as long as they come home. So my idea was, okay, if we have a, a series of estates, people can come home, maybe be familiar with what they know and um, live together in a community if they want to. And that's what those estates are about. But in creating those estates, it's also about recognizing that when you come and you put your feet on that soil, you're also bringing home your ancestors at the same time. Yes. And so we must, we must honor our ancestors every single day mm -hmm. because if it wasn't for them, we would not be where we are today. Mm -hmm. True, true. This estate is about bringing them home and allowing them to come back home and put their feet back on the soil where they were dragged away from. But at the same time, for us to enjoy living here also. Yeah. And um, you've, got, you've got a kind of opening, a launch event of this estate. I think all the plots have gone now, haven't they? They are almost gone. I think you're, you're holding... Yeah, I think you're desperately trying to hold on one for me. <laughs> but carry on. <laughs> but I couldn't believe how... how Hard. the ancestors have been working the plots went in three days look at that I just couldn't contain it so because of that I thought I'd just be doing the one and finish I'm actually on ready to start number four now yeah. number two went very quickly number three went very quickly and I'm now getting ready to start estate number four wonderful and you've got uh, you know our sister Angie's going to be one of your guest speakers we've heard yeah. from her and the great works that she's doing and you've also got Dr. Mumbi Saraki coming in from the Kenya Yes, and you know, it's funny how we met because, again, the ancestors, I, I went away with um, PDOIS, which is the, one of the political parties here in, in Gambia, very much supported by um, the Honourable Halifa Salah, who is a Pan-African minister here, has been fighting for sovereignty rights in the Gambia for over 40 years. And um, I went to see him last year before we started our citizenship campaign. And um, he, he always invites me to whatever um, ceremonies or occasions they're having. And um, I went away with their Congress last year, end of last year. And um, QTV were there and did a small interview, which I thought, OK, nothing of. I'll just answer a few questions. <laughs> it went viral, didn't it? Oh my, you know, I'm not a computer bod or anything, but this video went viral mm. beyond my beliefs, so much so that I was getting probably nearly 50 uh, emails, texts, messages a day from people wow. talking about this video. And um, it was since then that um, I decided, you know what, yeah, we, we can do things with this. But Dr. Mumbi, it was sent to her via the AU and she aired it on her show mm. when she aired it she actually got in contact with me and we've been friends since then oh beautiful I to come over um, for the event which she gladly accepted so she's coming over next week mm-hmm yeah fantastic oh excited our neighbor on estate number one yeah <laughs> yes, will be it's great it's great i've got text messages coming in callers uh trying to ring up as well uh this text message says wonderful to hear the sister in the gambia gosh the ancestors are amazing that's exactly what i plan to do in the gambia yeah so people are loving uh what they're hearing uh, my sisters yeah so um let's see if we've been able to add any calls to the line um no uh caller was trying to call in I, i've got a problem with your life shakina it seems to block out anyone else from coming in on the board <laughs> so what i'll do is when someone rings in i'll just ask you to give way for a moment or two and then call back in again as you did with angie please if that's okay, if that. that's okay are you also able to get us on the internet 
Say that again, sorry? Are you also able to listen to us on the internet? I'm sure I can if you tell me how to. Yeah, www.galaxyafiwi.com because what I could do, I could then open the lines, have you listen offline, get callers to call in, ask questions. I've got two calls trying to come in right now. Yeah, and then you can hear the questions offline and then call back in again. Is that all right? Okay, well, let me ring off now and see if the people can get on. Yes. And then if, if I'm able to come back on and... Oh, please do. Just listen. Try that. Yeah, listen via the internet so you can hear the callers. Yeah, and then please do call back in with your response to the questions that have been asked, etc. Yeah, is that all right? Just give me a minute, I'll do that. Fantastic. Uh, Thanks to our sister Shakina. We want to continue this conversation and we want you to be able to interact as well. So, Sister Wiener, please do call back. Uh, I should be able to pick your call up now. Uh, Brother Akram, uh, call back. I should be able to pick your call up now. Okay, we've just got uh, uh, Sister Win coming in. Rise yourself up, Sister Win. Are you there? Okay, hang on. No. Okay, let's uh, ask the callers to call back in. Also, um, hopefully, we've still got our brother um, listening in from America. If you've got questions for him as well, we're going to open up the lines now for the next hour. We're going to have a conversation with our sister Angie, our sister Shakina, and we're also going to have a conversation with our brother Ronald as well. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Right, the calls are not being added. Sister Andrew, if I could ask you to ring off as well, I'm just going to refresh the board. Oh, yeah? I'll do that. Something oh. not quite right. Thank you so much. Okay, right, the lines are open. So um, call back in, callers. Uh, hold on one second. Let me bring back Sister Shakina. Yeah, sorry, Sister Shakina. Just. Sister Shakina. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, um, I haven't added the other callers as yet. I was having a little problem. All right. All right, thank you. All right, Sister Wynne, are you there? Yes, I am. Oh, fantastic. Okay, Sister Wynne, welcome to the Big G. You know, I said something to you in private. I'm going to say it in public. Go ahead. Our pathway open halfway maker. Oh, I remember you saying that, yeah. And you walk in your power, my feet, and just stay forward and be true to yourself and everybody around you. You know, <laughs> oh my gosh, I have been like a ship without a rudder for the past three months as to what I'm going to do where Ghana is concerned. And I was just about to do something really silly and I listened to the sister and I said, you know something, keep oh. your little black ass quiet. <laughs> because the exact thing that she said she's doing on our people's behalf is what I plan to do. Oh. Okay? Yeah. Stay long because there's someone else has joined the office. But okay. Say, sister, thank you so much. Blessed love. One love, sister. We're in our link you with our sis Shakina. You know, as I said to sis Shakina, we need to have her duplicated in almost every African country. So, you know, maybe there's a network or some kind of alliance that could be made. You know, uh, what do you think, sister Shakina? I heard her. Thank you very much. And yes, I agree. This needs to be a blueprint. Um, I've also said the same thing with our citizenship campaign that it shouldn't just happen in Gambia, it should happen across the continent. Whatever we do in one place, we should replicate it. Absolutely. Oh, rise yourself up, sis. Okay, I'm trying to add other calls. <laughs> and again, I'm having the same. Come off again? Yes, please. I'm so sorry. Oh, thank you, sis for bearing with us um we got a little uh, situation where um when our sister shakina's on i'm unable to add other calls she's kindly given way so uh if you want to call back in callers that we're trying to get through 
Uh, I saw, saw I saw brother Akram. I saw sister Andrew trying to get back in. Uh, so the and a couple of other callers. The lines uh, are now free. And also, if you've got any questions for our brother as well, who called in earlier. Uh, uh, please do uh, give us a call. Um, hopefully he's still listening uh, and he will be able to um, respond. Okay, so I've just, uh, hopefully, let's see how many calls I've managed to add there. I've managed to grab two calls from the system before it goes. Caller 412. Greetings, caller 412. Who do we have on the line? Caller 412. Greetings. Yeah. Greetings, caller 412. Please introduce yourself to the Galaxy family. Yeah, Prince Levi, you know. Oh, greetings, Prince Levi. How are you doing? My day boat. Your day, ah? Good to hear from you. Have you been listening to the show all morning? Did you hear our brother Ronald and our sister Shakina? Yeah, really. I want to respond to the sister Shakina, you know, because I'm a site up on the internet and I feel her vibes, you know. Okay, go ahead, my brother. She's on the line. There's, there's something I hear to say we want to really kind of address when she say we should respect our ancestors, you know, every single day. Mm-hmm. And I have heard something being said which I pointed out to you before. Mm-hmm. Which you had that knowledge, and then you kind of revert upon your original um, stance, you know. Because I think when someone stand on someone's shoulder, that, that is a disrespect. And I keep hearing our people saying they are standing on the shoulders of their ancestors. It's slave to put that in a black people's head. It's a white man, so he stand on the shoulders of giants. That is what I don't press I do. I don't think that. It's appropriate for us to be saying concerning our mother, father, grandparents, and genetic blood, blood, blood lineage. How would you put it, my brother? Where's my sister? How would you put it? We, we, they are standing on our shoulder. That is the way you show the greatness of a person when you elevate them, not oh. putting them below. Because okay. can be standing on someone's shoulder and giving the impression that we are showing them. Up. Well, you know what, my brother, rise yourself up. Sometimes we have to stop and take a check and, and, and you know, really penetrate what we're saying. And is when ones and ones like yourself actually call us up and say, well, on it, you know? Check what you're saying. Then we can look into it. Yeah, I just don't know how to say. I come off, you know, but I really tough thing I when I hear them talk. All right. Well, in future, we will say that our ancestors are standing on our shoulders. And you know what? I can see my mum on my shoulders and her mum and her mum. Our, go- mm-hmm. our good works, we make them look high yeah, and great. So, okay, so... We are elevating our ancestors. Write yourself up, my brother. Thanks for coming on the line. Blessed to Ireland. Well, love. Well, love. Okay, so that's our brother Levi. Do we have brother Akram on the line? Sister Angie, I'm trying to add you and can't. I'm so sorry. Brother Akram, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, before I bring you in, let me just give Sister Shakina an opportunity to respond to what brother Levi had to say. Um, I understand what he's saying. I never use that term, standing on the shoulders of my ancestors. I always just say I honour them and give them respect. So I never use that term, but I understand what he means. And um, yes, I suppose he's right because they are above us, not below us. So yeah, I I respect his, his viewpoint on that. All right. Thank you, my sis. And uh, sorry, Sister Angie, still trying to add you there. Brother Akram. Yeah, greetings, uh, my sister. And um, rise up, grand rising to the family and the, the galaxy family. And, uh, the sister in the Gambia, um, you know, I, you know, I, I, um, I'm really bigging up big time because, you know, um, as you know, I'm in Africa for the last 30 years, and as I said, I've been looking at what we need to do. Um, what they, what they, what they're doing, what they're doing now is something which I've been propagating. You know, I, I said when the ACU founded, this is one of the great things that the ACU can can do, and she's reiterated in in every way um, because 
there was a sister from Jamaica in Tanzania many years ago. Um, her name was Jamelia. She was a journalist and she married to Tanzania. She was there. And we wanted to start something very similar because, you know, because um, people don't know when they go, they're going to this strange land. They need somebody to, to, to navigate them around. Yeah. And, um, somebody to navigate them around. So we were planning to do that. Unfortunately, I came back, um, and when, when I came back, suddenly she, she died from hypertension, so we didn't get that off the ground. Mm. But um, but this is something I've been trying to highlight. I mean, mm -hmm. and, you know, I big her up for that, I big time. You know, I'm, I'm so glad for her, because all people are, are lacking the vision of what we have out here to do. And as she rightly points out, you know, because of this thing, you hear it so many times. People say, oh, we send money for a Muma back at <laughs> Yeah. And, and the, the house never gets built. Mm. It's, so, it's so important for us to get an agency mm -hmm. that, will, that will, you know, you can send your money to. Mm. And that agency buy the land for you, it will build the house for you, mm -hmm. everything, and it give you, you know, you, we need something like that. We need an honest um, uh, team to do that. And I'm so glad that she has actually started to do it. You know, and as you like to say, we can replicate that right across, not just Africa, across the Caribbean, because this um, this area is so important. So many of our people mm. have been sending money back, I mean, right across the board, I'm talking to everybody, uh, um, Jamaica, all across the Caribbean and Africa, who this, who this problem has, has, um, has encountered this problem. They send money back. Mm -hmm. And things are not done. Yeah, and that that dishonesty is what's destroying us. Yeah, and it gets in the way of progress and development, doesn't it? So, rising up our sister Shakina for taking this important step. Hundred percent. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm glad that she has the ability to do it. You know, what I mean, because as I said, you know, that's what I'm saying. The the problem that we have, the people with the skills that has the ability, and as um. As Akon said, whatever skill you have out here, take it to Africa because absolutely, it, it can, you know, take it to Africa. Yes, right. I mean, you know, Africa is the, the dream is so huge, you know. And oh my God, you know, you, I, I, I wish I was, I was close. I could give you a hug because um, <laughs> you're hundreds of. You're the, welcome, brother. Right I feel I feel your support, and I thank you so much for that support. Because you know, those of us that are Garveyites and Krumerites, Pan Africans, this is what we're supposed to do to prove who we are. Mm -hmm. But exactly, and as I said, you know, I said honesty, just honesty. I mean, you mm -hmm. you start doing that for people, and I'm telling you, you can become as big. I mean, you can become a Rockefeller tomorrow. I'm telling you, it's, it's, a, it's a huge business. Huge business, right? You know. Well, you know, I'm not, I'm not a, a business person where I'm bothered about, you know, the money and stuff. For me, this is about getting our people out of the suffering that they're going through in the West because it's not conducive to us and you know I get to hear a lot of the stories I get to hear the tears when people are calling me you know about how stressed they are and I just can't sit back and say well I'm all right so you have to dig your own way out of the hole no that's not correct mm -hmm. yeah but you you may not have that in mind but I'm just telling you, you that what you're on is huge it, it's big you. Do you understand what I'm saying Yes, right? I, do. And, I do. And and you you can you can reiterate that and do that. You know, you can be in Ghana tomorrow doing that. You, they, all across Africa, you can set up that business, right? Because as I said, it's something that's very much needed. I'm trying yeah. to tell all people that I'm saying, look, this is something that the ACU could do. You know, yeah. what I mean, these are all these all these things I see as as part of the plan mm -hmm. that we can mm -hmm. do, but the people are not coming forward. So, you know, so grand rising to you that you have, you have um, initiated it. You know what I'm saying? Right? Thank you. know. You. And, I mean, as I said, look, you know, people seem to not uh, take my vision greatly because the same thing... Like my oh, we do, Brother Akram. It's just about timing. You know, it's yeah. just about the timing. Uh, you keep plugging the ACU, you know, and what Cooperative Union is all about. We will get there. This is just the first step, you know. We we will get there. 
Mm. Oh, most certainly. I mean, because as I said, I've been also highlighting the school situation and what should be taught. And I know there's um, a brother from Gambia, I mean, not Gambia, Ghana, who, who was working in Silicon Valley, who has actually had the ability, and he's actually gone back to Ghana and set up such a school. Whereas you, you, you educate our people in an Afrocentric way and teach them to be leaders and visionaries. So important, right? Yes, indeed. That what is right. We need to be teaching our children to be lead, not just think, but not just the ordinary academic, but be leaders and yeah, visionaries. yeah, you know yes, I mean? indeed. Because yeah. lack of vision is what is holding us back. So yeah. many of our people lack the vision, mm-hmm. lack the ability to see, you know, to understand what we can do. So we're encouraging all those with a vision. And the aptitude and the skills to go for it, do it, just like our sister Shakina did. So what I, I've got other callers trying to call in that I can't add again. So sorry. So um, sister Shakina, I'm going to have to ask you to call back again, just to open up the line for a moment or two to let a few more calls in, please. Sorry about this. Yeah, so caller 204 that was trying to call in, uh, you can call back in. Sister Angie, you've been trying to call in, you can call back in. So and anyone wanting to call in, uh, now is the time. The number is 0207-193-0174. Or if you're calling via Skype, just go to uh, Galaxy Afiwi. Um, everyone's telling me we've got quite a few Skype numbers skype addresses and they're not sure which one it is i think it's the um uh, galaxy station one or galaxy on air okay and you should be able to um access us uh that way so if you want to call in i'm trying to add the calls now i'm not sure if um i've managed to add them so it seems to be a bit of a problem with the board uh who do we have on the line please do we have anyone on the line? Okay, I'm going to actually... Do you, want, do you want me to... Do you want yeah, if you could hang off as well, please, Brother Akram. I'm going to shut the board down and restart it because yeah. the calls are, are not coming through for some unknown reason. Okay, so I'm just going to open up the board again. So if you want to call in now, the number is 207 Seven four, okay. So, uh, caller zero two nine. Greetings, caller zero two nine. Are you there? Yeah, hi, hi. Good morning, Sinise. Um, sister Sinise, I'm here. Well, yes. Uh, yeah, great. We've got two callers on the line. Yeah. S- two zero four. If you can hold just a moment, please. Two zero four. Let's bring in caller zero two nine. Greetings, caller 029. Thanks for calling back. How are you doing? Greetings, greetings. Triple X, yeah. Just a, just a question for your sister in from um, Gambia. Yes. Um, you know, when people buy land in Gam- um, Gambia, how can they make sure that the land is not going to be waterlogged when the rainy season comes? Oh. Wash, you know, wash into their houses, because I've known a few people who bought land, build a house, yes. and then the rain season has come, mm. and it's, drain- it's drenched their house and mess up their ruin their furniture and things like that and is there is there any way you can get a survey done to make sure the land where you buy your land it's it's you know it won't get washed away or it won't get flooded in the the rainy season because when you go out there in the summer season in the the tourist times yeah it's nice and hot and nice and there's no (laughs) you buy a piece of land you don't know what's going to happen until the rainy season comes that's true i've seen out there myself where in the rainy season the wall actually comes up to the wall like three, three feet up in the you know, from the ground. Yeah. So you know, how how do you how do you you know make sure that that can't happen to you? And is there a survey to be done? And is there like people telling me, you know, where to buy the land? You know, where it's not going to be flooded? You know, something something like that. Good to let you know good. sensibly. And for the and for the, the other um, young man that was done from America. Yes. Did you didn't answer the question about the flood, um, the, the, the the um the boat. And all these oh Noah and the Ark and all the animals on the boat, yeah. He didn't really answer. It. He went round, but anyway, he needs to answer that one. And then I got a question for him about the Bible. He said it's, it's the it's the truth, and he swears by it. And it's the but to me, I see it as a fairy tale, as a, a storybook. And if if that's the case, if he sees that the truth, 
is the King James version the truth as well and it's the Maccabee version that they banned when I was growing up in Jamaica oh. they banned that version why did they ban it and is that the truth as well yeah. which which truth are we listening to which truth is the truth yes and at this storybook because I find nothing is so called truth in this storybook yeah fallible and outrageous and ridiculous and someone with common sense and practicality in this time and age you can't listen to it it's like it's like when you're little listening as a young child by a fireside you listen to stories better than stories and all that and you're absorbed by it but as you get older and you get common sense and, and black consciousness you find out that this thing is a lot of rubbish so in my opinion so you know I don't want to upset no Christians out there but you know I would like to be explaining to him to explain which is the Bible is the truth how do we pick out the truth for the nonsense out there which Bible is the real Bible because mm -hmm. there's so many versions and is the version of that was written by this, this white king is that, is that a good version by this homosexual king is, is that a real version or is that the more lies and distortion that's just something I want to put out there so uh -huh. can, can I listen off air yes you can yeah. indeed uh, uh, yeah, thank you so much for your the phone has been fun at first but it's alright now sorry I said the phone description was not good at first, but it's okay now. So now I can hear what you're saying and I can okay. listen properly. But yeah, I've listened off here to, to, to what you're saying. Yes, yeah, so I hope you can get a chance to. Thank you. Thank you so much for your questions and for your call, Brother Triple X. Rise yourself up, my brother. Okay. And uh, before I put your questions to our sister Shakina and to our brother um, from America, Brother Ronalds, can I uh, go to caller uh, 024, please? Greetings, caller 024. Who do we have on the line? Uh, greetings, Shanice. Uh, it's Brother O. Brother who, sorry? It's Brother O. Brother, oh, welcome to the Big G. How are you doing? Uh, not, not too bad, not too bad. Um, a good, good show. I like what I'm hearing. Thank you so much, my brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's opening my, 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 <coughs> my mind to certain things. So this, what... Sorry, I've got another caller. Uh, the other caller on the line, if you could just hold, please, while caller 024 uh, speaks. Go ahead. Yeah. What I was thinking... Um, what other people are thinking now? Yes, Maybe good. she set up as a um a business or a cooperative where we get more like minded people together. I know it's been a little read, uh, already been said already, but I think we need to get a lot of our people together. I'm talking about professionals. This this can create jobs for some of our young people who um they gone to university, got no job. Yeah, what I'm saying is that we have if we have people going out there and scouting, speaking to the um uh, various governments, yeah, and various people. In, in Africa a lot of Tanzania has given I think Tanzania has given land Ghana has given land mm -hmm. another country mm -hmm. so you speak to the people the government and you speak to um, it, the professionals so that you can say right this land is going to be allocated yeah right or you find out all the legal parts to it yeah so people can't get ripped off you find out about local people I, I heard some part, certain parts of Ghana when you buy your land some of the, the, the local buy them yeah they come to the people that got the land and say oh you have to pay um, like a protection money and they come mm -hmm. once and twice then you, you have to speak to the chief mm -hmm. right so to cut out all that nonsense so the main thing I'm trying to get on is um, this can spur us onto a, what um, the, uh, the brother was talking about the cooperative bank because if we all get together and not waste time in certain meetings we have at the, at the end of the year yeah and as should uh, you we um, Galaxy had a meeting yeah I'm not saying it's, it's rubbish to try and sort things out but what we need to do come like at the end of the year like Christmas time now right Mm -hmm. When people have them Christmas morning and then bonus and then on thing, we get together and have a Kwanzaa thing. We do our Kwanzaa thing, and the other half of that is business. Mm -hmm. We have people saying we're going to go to Africa, yeah, right? and we're going to do X, Y, and Z, yeah? because we've already got people doing it. Got the, the guy calls it, um, was it Africa for the Africans? Mm -hmm. He's sending people from, from America, yeah, and you're you're you yourself are going to Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is um tighten up this thing, bring it together, have a various number of meetings, right? Finite it, yeah, and then find out get quality people, yeah, to go out there and they would, and I say you 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 give money now, right? They're mm -hmm. they're showing you land you got they're sending over the details, yeah, mm -hmm. the shipping the details about paper. You you, you go over there, you get what I'm saying? We need to now, right? Because a lot of us are suffering in this country and we've got money we're spending on stupidness, mm -hmm. and if it means like we we come save about. Say we have a Kwanzaa and 500 or 100 of us a day, yeah? Mm -hmm. And we put in um, 20 pounds each. And what we're doing, we're trying to 
buy um, get materials to buy to build um, materials to build a property. Mm-hmm. We we got some of that there in Ghana because Ghana's giving that free land. We got the land, yeah. Mm-hmm. We put on uh, uh, we go down there and say, yeah, I want that piece of land. And then we put money right every week or every month, yeah, like mm-hmm. a, a partner scheme, yeah, right. And then we have someone down there vouching like this is stuff, mm-hmm. showing it's all been completed and it's the spec we want. Yeah. Because we all know we've got people in Jamaica, right? And I'm not, I've heard of people, they um this is a, sometimes relatives, you know. They get the money's been sent out there mm-hmm. and they're um they're mother, they're mother's sweet hearts, yeah. And then when a relative they hear the relatives come out there, they kill them. And this has happened mm-hmm. more than once. Mm-hmm. So stop all that nonsense. We have proper professional people gone out there people spoke to the government so there's no rip off rip off rip off because mm-hmm. right now we can't sit down no, no longer we have to when we have our, our meetings here we have to have meetings council meetings and have the business head on it mm-hmm. there's no time to fool around because these people are getting serious now mm-hmm. you see what they're going to America they're killing black people for joke go in your house and I'm kill you mm-hmm. it's only a matter of time before they start bringing it here so mm-hmm. all I'm trying to say uh, after I come off the phone I hope we somebody or all of us get together say, you know what Quanza come up this year or next year we're going to set up a meeting and don't bother come if you ain't going to put at least a five pound in the thing don't bother come man if you're just going to um, you don't believe in your own people and don't bother come if you're, if you're a hustler a rip off a con artist because in the conscious community unfortunately I don't the conscious, conscious people here yeah? it is certain hustlers criminals come along into our thing and put on their, um, their African attire mm. and they dare to rip off Mm-mm. And these people are getting exposed now, and we need to cut these people out, expose them, put them aside, and actually build. You know, I could talk forever, so I'm going to come off to this, yeah? <laughs> but give thanks, beautiful program, yeah? Rise yourself up, rise yourself up. Uh, brother O. Thanks. Yeah, thank you uh, for your contribution there. A brother who has been truly inspired by the work that our sister Shakina is uh, telling us about that she is busily doing in the Gambia. And um, our brother O now is saying that we, you know, here in the UK, those of us with money to spend and spending it frivolously, when we come together for our meetings, it can't be just about a celebration. It's also got to be about business. There, We need to put our business hat on. We need to be thinking cooperatively. And we need to be looking at, you know, investing in Africa through uh, people like our sister Shakina. Rise yourself up, my sis, inspiring uh, the call here today. I wonder if you'd like to just respond to our brother O and then I'm going to bring back our uh, brother Ronald as well to um, respond to the question about the Bible and also my sister Shakina, I don't know if you heard a question from our brother Triple X who was um, asking about um, you know where we buy land in Africa in Gambia for example summer season the land looks wonderful but then if you're not there in the rainy season you may not realize that you've actually bought a piece of land that gets flooded <laughs> during the rainy season how do you protect against that yeah and that that's a very valid question um that people need to be concerned about and i usually do those checks when i'm buying land to um one visit during the rainy season go around and see different places but also ask um the physical planning who draw up sketch plans etc you know does that land hold the water during the rainy season what it's like etc and try and get that um done i know there was a piece of land i bought for my son last year and um, because it's near the river, that's the exact question I asked. You know, what is it like in the rainy season? And they had actually done a report on there to check that out because it was so near to the river. So it's a very valid question. And yes, people need to ask those questions. And part of the service I offer is to check those things out. You know, go and visit during the rainy Hello? season, but also check mm-hmm. with the government department. I don't know. I think she's probably if put us on. Yeah, sorry, uh, Sister Royalty, you're live. You're coming over live. <laughs> I'll bring you in in just a moment. Yeah, sorry, Sister Shakina. Carry on. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, part of the service is for me to do some of those checks as well and to ask the government departments about the water logging in certain areas. Um, most of the areas in Gambia are quite good. The provinces get a lot of the flooding, um, the, the high areas. I mean, Gambia is not a hilly place. It's a very flat place. 
So some places hold the water a lot, others it drains away very easily. I mean, my first piece of land that I'm building our family home on um, drains the water very, very easily. It rains, there's no water left in the land at all. Um, and then there are other areas where it will hold the water for a little bit and then it will go down, you know, as soon as it's able to. So it's a very valid question that he's asked there. Wonderful. Thank you so much uh, for your response to that question. Oh, I think it was. Brother, oh, yeah. Yes, um, he's quite right. We do need to come together. We do need to do this. And this is why I'm doing the estates because, you know, people are able to buy their, their land and build their homes together. And, you know, I do encourage families to do it together. Mm -hmm. You know, people who don't have a lot of money, maybe to do it with a, a trusted friend or whoever. But, you know, my motto is, Sister Shanice, is that every time we buy a piece of land as Africans, we stop the Chinese, the Indians, the Arabs, the Lebanese from buying land. Yeah. These people are very smart. And what they're doing, they're buying massive pieces of land and then want to sell it back to us at extortionate prices. Hmm. Or they stop us from buying and build big estates mm. that they can sell back to us. Mm. We need to buy it. I don't care if you build it. I don't care if you never come. Just buy it, land bank, and put it in Africans' names. Mm -hmm. Because it's about us reclaiming our land. Mm -hmm. And if we allow other people to come and buy that land, then we can't even grow what we eat. We can't even maintain our health. Because we have to then depend on these people to decide whether we can have land or not. And that's not appropriate. It's just not right. Yes, sis. Uh, true, true. All righty. Um, you know, so rise up, brother. Oh, I think, you know, we're going to have to have an African um, symposium of some sort and maybe invite our sister Shakina over. And uh, like you suggested, get those like-minded people together uh, so that we could begin to do some works as a collective, most definitely. Um, okay. Now, we had a question uh, from a caller um, about the flood. So this is going back to our brother um, Ronald. Brother Ronald, do we still have you on the line? Yes. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Sister Shakina, I'm going to go over to our brother Ronald, who we had a, a question for. In the meantime, I wonder if you could, sorry, just ring off to free up the line so others can call in. I don't normally have this problem, but for some odd reason, your your line is blocking other calls from coming in. Yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you, my sis. Okay, you can hear questions via the internet. Okay, the line is free now, so if you want to call in, you can. The number is zero two zero seven one nine three zero one seven four. Or if you're calling in via Skype, the address is Galaxy Afiwi. And uh, there's about three options, the Galaxy Station, Galaxy On Air, Galaxy Online. I think you need the Galaxy Station, okay, uh, to get through to us. Now, we um, are privileged to um, still have on the line our brother um, from America, Brother Ronald Dalton. And uh, if you were listening in to us on the earlier part of the show, you would have heard a really interesting discussion. He's a filmmaker. He's written a book about from Hebrews to Negroes. And uh, there's going to be a film, seminar, talk. Uh, we're going to watch the film. It's going to be happening this coming Sunday, the 17th of November at 2 p.m. at the St. Andrews Centre, Broccoli SE4. 2SA. Now, tickets have been selling fast. If you want to get your tickets, you can get tickets from Eventbrite. You can get tickets from justtickets.com. Uh, the film is t entitled, you know, um, from Hebrews to Hebrews to Negroes, Hidden Stories, Biggest Secrets. It's a film seminar. It's a talk show. And it's an opportunity for us to have a conversation about the Bible as well, because, you know, we all have our different views and opinions and different views and opinions are well welcome okay and um, you know we're gonna you know be civil in our discussions and in our debate you know and it, it's okay for us to have a different ideological perspective on things and um, you know what we do is we come together and we share our 
thoughts and opinions. So for now, let me just step out the way because, um, you know, I wasn't able to bring our brother on as early as I'd hoped this morning. So, you know, his time was cut a bit short uh, and uh, there were questions coming in. There was calls that was trying to come in. So I just want to open up the lines again for our brother to talk about the film that he's made and um, to respond to the, the questions as they come in. Uh, bringing you back, uh, brother um, Ronald Dalton, Julia. All right. So what I want to address is that people always want to attack the Bible and the stories. And they say, well, Egypt this, Egypt that. Okay. But when you look at the history, you'll see that, like I said earlier, you have a flood story myth in the Hawaiians called Nu, N-U-U, and the flood. You have the Australian Aborigine flood story. It's called the Argumana myth. You have the Chinese flood story myth. It's called the Fuhi family of the Miao tribes, which is the division of the Han tribe in China. You have the Yoruba Nigerian flood story of Ife, the Ili Efe, Albatala, the sky god. Galaxy Afiwi, the only de-brainwashing station.